Hi there. I want to talk to you about understanding the Word of God and getting the most out of it. Remember that the Word that God has given us is His love letter to us. And yet many people are not enjoying the benefits that He's intended for us to have through His Word. His Word is a revelation of His person, His completed work in Christ. And so we want to get into that topic, Be Blessed, Enjoy. How to understand God's Word and get the most out of it from His heart to yours. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, in the New King James Version says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Did you see that? Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's our starting point here in this uh, segment on how to understand God's word and get the most out of it is that the Word of God needs to be rightly divided. Now, what do we mean by rightly dividing the Word of Truth? So we're talking about rightly dividing the Word of Truth, and certainly the Bible is divided into two halves. The Old Covenant under Moses on the left-hand side, and the New Covenant under Jesus on the right-hand side. So it's important to understand the distinction between the Old and the New, because while they both reveal the person, the work, the nature, the plan of God, there is a progression from the old to the new, where the new in fact supersedes and is described as a better covenant than the old covenant. So let's just look at this particular scripture and kick off from there. This is John's gospel, gospel according to John. And down here in verse 17, it says, For the law was given through Moses... But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that interesting? The law was given through Moses. Moses was the mediator. He was up on the mountain, Mount Sinai, in the desert, while the children of Israel were on the way to the promised land. The law was given. It was kind of impersonal. was written on stones. It wasn't able to minister life to the people like the way Jesus ministered life to the people when he personally came and ministered grace and truth. So look at that contrast immediately. The law was given, but grace and truth came personally. I think that's the uh, a key starting point about rightly dividing the word of truth, is that Jesus Christ came personally to seek and save the lost and impart his life through his promises to his people, those that received him. And so that's our first point. So our second point regarding rightly dividing the word of truth is that God always deals with us, mankind, through covenant. Now we've seen that there's two main covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant, the one under Moses and the one under Jesus, the new covenant. And so when Jesus came to establish a new covenant, he totally distinguishes himself by his person and his work, which was radically different to what was taking place under the old covenant. When Jesus came, he came as the perfect God-man. He was God in the flesh. And the blood that he shed on the cross, his work that he did, the ultimate in his work that he did, was pure blood that could do a complete cleansing work. Unlike the blood of bulls and goats under the, new, under the old covenant with Moses, that they had to do over and over again every day, every week, every month, every year. But when Jesus came, he shed his blood once and for all. And it did the job. It satisfied the justice of God on our behalf as his gift to us. By grace we're saved through faith. And so when we look at the next scripture, Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, we're going to see something about the new covenant as it's described there. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, this is how it reads, New Covenant, New, New King James Version. But now he, that's speaking about Jesus as our high priest, has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant. So, in order to rightly divide the word of truth, we've got to realize that the covenant that we have is a better covenant. Now, why would you want to go back and live under the old covenant with its rules and regulations, when you've got a better covenant, which that verse goes on to say, which was established on better promises. Reading verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. So the obvious conclusion is that the first covenant had its limitations, 
But now the second covenant, the new covenant under Jesus, is unique. It's, it's better. He's a better high priest, and what he did is better. And he has some clarification. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I make with their fathers. And if we can flip the page... Here we go. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. Bit of history there. For this is the covenant, now concentrate on this one now, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. This is it. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now let's just hold up for a second there and recognize that the old covenant under Moses, the law was written on those cold tablets of stones. It kind of condemned. In fact, the Bible does say that there is condemnation when we look at the Ten Commandments of God. Condemnation, guilt, punishment, a ministry of death. But the new covenant that is written on our minds and on our hearts is totally different. We won't even have to um, have our neighbors, as it says here in verse 11, and none his brother saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greater them. There's going to be no system of priests and high priests and so on that gets in the way, a religious system that kind of screens people out of a personal relationship with God. Jesus has now paved the way for all of us to enjoy the mercy of God, which we see here in verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, isn't that interesting? That's God's perspective. So in order to enjoy the benefits of the new covenant, we've got to know that God is merciful to to our unrighteousness, and our sins and lawless deeds He remembers no more. Now, how is that possible? Because Jesus' blood has washed them away. Now, if Jesus' blood has washed them away as our new covenant high priest, what are we doing bringing them to remembrance in our prayers and in our thinking and in our relationship with God, kind of setting up barriers between us and God through this uh, idea of, of sin, whereas God has dealt with the idea of sin. Verse 13 says, in that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. So all that stuff in the Old Covenant, which is interesting and it's good for background and foundational knowledge, it's actually, in functioning terms, obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So it's it's critical for us to know that God sees things in His Word very often quite differently from the way we do. And we need a revelation of it, an understanding of how God sees things. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. You know, that's absolutely critical. (laughs) If we don't realize that as far as God's concerned, now this is His word that we've got to take at His word by faith. If God does not see sin as a problem, why do we make sin a problem? Not that we're taking his grace, which is his undeserved uh, favor and merit, uh, to an illogical conclusion and using it as an excuse to continue in sin. No, flip it on its head the way God intended in order to rightly divide his word of truth. God intends his grace to empower us to walk in victory over sin. Because, you know, Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says that through the abundance of grace... And the gift of righteousness that he's given us, we rule and reign over sin in this life. As kings, the Amplified puts it. Now a king is someone who has domain over his realm or his kingdom. Now the realm that God has given us is first of all our own selves, our thoughts, our motivations, our passions, our drives, our ambitions, whatever it is. God wants us to come under his domain his dominion, and then exercise that dominion in our own lives. Then he gives us a sphere of influence according to the giftings and callings on our lives, where he wants us to certainly bind the works of the enemy and loose his goodness 
in that realm and that sphere of influence. Now we can only do that if we have our backs covered. And God has got our backs covered. In fact, not only our backs, our fronts, our side, he surrounds us with his favor as a shield. And that favor is, once again, it's unmerited. It's given to us as a gift and it's abundant. It covers every area. Our sins, lawless deeds, iniquities, whatever it may be that has bothered you and your family and your life forever is now dealt with because we're living under a better covenant established upon better promises that Jesus is standing surety for as the mediator. Not only is he standing surety, making intercession at the right hand of the Father, but he's also sent the Holy Spirit to empower us to be that witness that he's called us to be. So just a couple of thoughts about rightly dividing the word of truth. We've got to see what we read in the old covenant and the dealings that God had with the people of Israel and the nations of the world at that time. They were functioning under a covenant that has now become obsolete. We've got to filter everything through the finished work of Jesus on the cross and understand God's plan for our lives in that way. I want you to explore things through that lens, that through the completed work of Jesus, we now live in a land of victory and of freedom, whom the Son has set free already is free indeed. Now let's learn the terms of that covenant, the new covenant where the word of God is written on the tablets of our heart, and let's go forward and out there and be the witness that God has called us to be as we walk in victory over sin, over the flesh, over any lie of the enemy or any condemnation that someone would lay on us or try to lay on us because whom the Son, as I said earlier on, has set free is free indeed and we're living under a new covenant. So rightly divide the word of truth and enjoy being blessed.